If I go into Photoshop and I'm going to create a new file, I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. So I'll make it um, 300 by 300. So I have this little file here and then I can kind of plan out my animation. So um, if I was to do this in real time, I would use like the Cintiq and draw in each frame. Um, what I'm going to do in this uh, for this is I'm going to double click on the background and hit OK. It turns into a regular layer. And then I'm going to just kind of draw something. Um, so this is a little bit you know, more difficult to do. But you know, it's like it's a little abstract um, animation here. So on layer two, I can kind of reference this. Um, create a new layer, layer three. And then what you can do is as I work on these, I, I kind of do an onion skinning by lower, lowering my opacity. So I'll lower that opacity. So it's just a little abstract, little squirrely, squiggly thing I'm making here. But this is um, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of making my um, sprite strip. So, okay, so let's say this is good. I'm going to bring all my opacities back up um, here. And now for this first one, I th um, actually, oops. Um, now I'm going to go into my timeline, create frame animation, go here to my hamburger menu say make frames from layers, but then I'm gonna play it. So it's a little abstract, squiggly thing. You know, it could be a little character walking, it could be all sorts of stuff. Um, once I have something that I like, what you can do now to create your sprite strip is you basically think about the size of this. So if I go to image, um, canvas size, this is 300. If I have, it's 300 pixels wide, I have five. So I probably want to make it 1500 pixels wide. And then I go to my um, anchor section here and I click on this arrow to the left and that will make the width happen from the left side. So I hit okay. I got my width, the, the full width that I want. Now I'm going to go to each of these layers. I'm going to cl click on layer one. Um, you know what? It kind of helps is um, to actually have a background for these. So having the white background would be helpful, but I'm just going to kind of guess. So layer one maybe comes up here. Layer two, up here. Layer three, up here. Layer four. Let me kind of adjust these a little bit. Okay, so that's my sprite strip. Um, what I'm gonna do, last step, is I'm gonna give everything a white background. So I'm gonna create a new layer, drag it to the bottom, fill it with white. I'm gonna select this white actually to make it match. And then the last thing I can do now is go to the very top layer, create a new layer, and then you can use this keyboard shortcut, which will take all the layers and combine them into one layer. So I can do a shift control alt E. If you're on a Mac, it's um, shift uh, control option E. It's all one layer. I'll just give it a name. I'll call it swirl. And then I'll right cl click on swirl 
and I'll export it as a PNG file. And I will associate it with a folder I already have here. Let's see. So, um, spread example, I will throw it in there. So, swirl PNG. So, do you guys remember how long this was? How long was this um, sprite strip? Do you guys remember? It was. It was, yeah, it was 1,500 pixels, right? Okay. So that's important. So the two things you want to remember. How long is the sprite strip? 1,500 in this circumstance. And how many images, which we can call sprites, are in this? So you have five. So I'm going to go back now to my code. So this is going to move 1,500 um, to left, basically, because it's going negative. I only have five. The other thing is, though, it's going to be 300 by 300. I, rem I remember that. So 300 by 300. And then for the background image, um, it's going to just go into that folder. So here, URL, swirl. So there's my swirl. Hit save. Hit my lightning bolt. And there's my animation. It's kind of like a simultaneous contrast effect. So that's the other way to um, create animation programmatically, which is kind of cool because you can do other things with this now. You could create a playhead. You can do some like JavaScript stuff. Maybe you have random animations. Um, you can do all sorts of things. So it's a kind of like a cool little um, way to do your animation that's interactive. Like you could create a hover, and every time you hover over it, then it would move. That's another way to do it. And I think that was a question about the video last time. Um, and that's the process. So is any questions about this? It's a little, there's a lot of steps here. Um, so basically what I did was I broke the steps down. So I have a document. You can look at. So let me bring it up. I'll, I'll post this document so everybody can see it. So, one second. So, I got to clean this up a little bit, but so the at keyframes rule is when you specify styles inside the rule. Um, let me put this next to this. So, when you specify styles inside the rule, it will grad gradually change from one style to another style. So the idea though is you have to bind. So this word bind here, you're binding the keyframe <laughs> rule to a name. So here I'm binding keyframes to the name move X. So one of the ways you do it, you know, you, you can do this is you, you start with your style. So I started with a div with a width and a height, a background image. Um, then we added We added uh, the animation name um, to this animation property here. So um, move X was the name. Then we create a duration, which is this number here, one S. Then we use the at keyframe, actually should be at keyframes, to identify the name that we created here, which was move X. And then you can do from and to. So from is basically looking at any um, bit of uh, any CSS property. So here we're using background position. And here in this, in this text example, it's affecting the transform translate. So it's doing, affecting a different 
CSS property, but here, background position, uh, you start at zero, and then you go to where you want that change to happen. But this can be anything. This can be maybe you're changing a color. Um, it can be anything in here. It doesn't, necess doesn't necessarily have to be um, a distance you know, from one point to the next. Um, and then you got some other options here. So you can add um, these timing functions. So you have ease out, um, you have forwards and backwards, and then you have an iteration count as well. So instead of um, infinity, you could add this iteration count and it would stop after you're doing it uh, three or four times. So those are the steps. Um, any questions about that? So it's a little, it's a little um, 